My dear readers, as we meander through the labyrinthine discourse that encapsulates our current conundrums on gender identity and the heavy hand of state intervention, we encounter a narrative so egregiously framed that it would make even the most stoic of bureaucrats blush. The episode at hand, a dialogue between Dr. Jordan Peterson and the Kolstads, serves as a glaring testament to the perils of intellectual laziness, masked as profound insight. Dr. Peterson, with his penchant for casting modern challenges in the light of archaic binary battles between the so-called sanctity of individual liberty and the supposed tyranny of collective governance, misses the forest for the trees, or perhaps more aptly, disregards the complex ecosystem for a couple of ideologically convenient saplings. This episode is a masterclass in obfuscation, a tale spun with the aim of vilifying nuanced and necessary societal mechanisms under the guise of defending the nuclear family from the clutches of an omnipresent state. The plight of the Kolstad family, while undoubtedly marked by personal tragedy and deserving of empathy, is commandeered by Peterson as a vehicle for his broader ideological crusade against the recognition of transgender identities. The narrative is saturated with a barely concealed contempt for the notion of gender fluidity, a contempt that seeks to delegitimize the lived experiences of countless individuals navigating the treacherous waters of societal acceptance. Peterson's rhetorical strategy is as transparent as it is tired. To paint the state, and by extension any institution that dares to challenge his antiquated worldview as malevolent behemoths intent on crushing the virtuous individual underfoot. Yet this simplistic dichotomy willfully ignores the genuine complexities of gender dysphoria, the intricacies of adolescent development, and the essential role of protective services in safeguarding the well-being of children. It is a narrative of convenience, bereft of the intellectual rigour and ethical consideration required to engage meaningfully with these issues. What's more, the episode is replete with a disturbing dismissal of the potential validity of the child's gender identity struggles. In his rush to anoint the Kolstads as martyrs on the altar of free speech and parental rights, Peterson effectively erases the agency and autonomy of the very individual at the heart of this maelstrom. The result is a discourse that prioritizes ideological purity over the nuanced, compassionate exploration of a young person's journey through the complexities of identity formation. In his ideological fervor, Peterson also conveniently glosses over the crucial function that child protective services and similar institutions play in the fabric of our society. These entities, though certainly not infallible, operate on the foundational principle of child welfare, a concept that seems to get lost amidst Peterson's polemical tirades against the spectre of state intervention. The demonization of these services not only undermines the legitimacy of their mission, but also sows unwarranted distrust in the mechanisms designed to protect our most vulnerable. In essence, the episode stands as a monument to missed opportunities, a conversation that could have delved into the heart of these pressing societal issues, instead reduced to a platform for ideologically driven fear-mongering. It is a disservice to the complexities of the human condition and a stark reminder of the necessity for critical thought and empathy in our engagements with the world around us. Before we stride towards our concluding thoughts, allow me an interjection that pleads for an embrace of complexity in our judgment. In the unfolding saga of the Kolstads and Peterson's dialogue, we must endeavour to harbour both empathy and critical disdain, recognising the entangled human and ideological narratives at play. This plea is not a call for indecision, but an invitation to acknowledge the multifaceted nature of these discourses, where confusion and insight often dance in close quarters. As we dissect their arguments and motives, let us do so with a heart that understands the tragic human element within, and a mind that does not shy away from critiquing where critique is due. Only by housing these multitudes within us can we approach the precipice of understanding, standing at the ready to dive deep into the complexities of such pivotal debates. This, dear readers, is the cradle of true intellectual and emotional maturity, paving the way for the nuance. My dear readers, we find ourselves at a crossroads. We can choose to follow the siren call of simplistic narratives and ideologically motivated vilifications, or we can commit ourselves to the more challenging but infinitely more rewarding task of navigating the nuances of these debates with the intellectual honesty and moral courage they demand. 
Let us choose wisely, for the stakes could not be higher.